Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Alan, and on behalf of my co-host, Wisconsin, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of uh, Bridging Heaven and Earth. I was thinking about, you know, how I'd introduce the guest tonight, and I really couldn't... I mean, I've used the words exciting, powerful, wonderful, uh, incredible, uh, inspirational guests, and, and tonight we really have another crew that fit all those descriptions. Uh, so uh, we have Claire Hartsong, who's a, a spiritual teacher, a channel, an author. She's written, uh, I haven't read it yet, but Wistancia said just an incredible book. I mean, her, her copy, she says, is all worn out. <laughs> now, I have to learn how to read to do that, but I'm working on it. And we have Chris Judge, who's a classical guitarist, and uh, he's going to be playing. And Earthstar is going to be dancing to one of the songs that Chris is going to be playing. So really, it should be a, a very wonderful show. And as everybody's been kidding me, I always say, pay attention. <laughs> so, but it really is going to be a wonderful show. So I hope you enjoy it. And as we normally do at this time, uh, Wistancia leads us in an invocation and a short meditation just to, to set the tone for the show. So Wistancia. Thank you, Alan. And so tonight we come before Father, Mother, God, I Am. We come at this time in a timeless sequence of walking and walking into the Father's heart and finding ourselves there. And so in this brilliant hour, we ask that everyone join heart to heart and join soul to soul, if you will. Let us join the kingdoms together, the animal kingdom, the human kingdom, the angel kingdom, and all of the kingdoms, the elemental kingdom, joining together in unity consciousness as we call forth to the mighty I Am Presence, asking that our presence move into our body at this hour deeper than ever before. We ask to be able to feel that presence soaking into our cells, into our organs of our body, into our hair, into our eyes, into our bloodstream. And we call forth to our hearts now for the openness of the heart and ask, asking Lord Sananda to please be with us, be present with us in this hour. And asking to feel that I am presence anchored firmly, firmly in the heart now. And we call forth to all of the archangels, asking for the protection of Michael this evening, asking that a beautiful ring of blue flame encircle each one of our homes and this studio. And let the angels, let the, his legions be with us, raising our vibration and bringing us into more faith and protection. And we ask for the love of Hamuel to flood us now, to overlight us with divine love. And tonight we call forth to the violet flame, asking that immense flame of forgiveness and transmutation and transformation to settle over us now like a blanket and let it blaze through us into the, our emotional body, physical body, spiritual body, mental body and etheric bodies. Let it just flood us with all the light of transfiguration and bring us into a harmony now that we have not known. Let this be a new awakening tonight and every hour it is so. And we ask that every electron, every bit, every bit of any of us, of all of us, that is of misqualified energy, let it now be transmuted. Let all fear be transmuted into love. Let the suffering and the pain end. And let the embrace come now to all that is. And let us all come into our wholeness. This is our prayer, this is our wish. To lift the earth and to lift ourselves into the very heart of God. And so maybe you can join with me now as we anchor our light into the heart of Mother, into the crystal, the great central sun in the center of the earth. And we anchor our light up to the Father's thrones, to Father, Mother, God, up through our I Am presence all around us, to the heavens, bridging heaven and earth. 
And we ask this night to really bridge heaven and earth, to really bridge all the parts of ourselves, the spiritual and physical, the divine and human, the masculine and feminine in us. And we ask that the, the ascended masters and angels, archangels, our guardian angels, all the divine ones and the highest parts of ourselves meet us on that bridge tonight. And so closing our eyes, if you choose, let us move into the silent sanctuary of the heart and take a moment of silence to ground our light up and down. Thank you. Well, tonight I am, I'm really excited because one of my most favorite, most favorite beings on earth is here as our guest. Her name is Claire Hartsong. She's here with us and she and I have been talking about this for a long time ago, months ago we talked about this and it, and it appears that, that everything happens in the right time. And so she will be here with us. She's, she has the hugest heart and the smallest body you will see, and she's just amazing. She has um, very, very, very interdimensional and just amazing. And we also have some beautiful music and dancing, which we will get to very quickly. I'm going to introduce now Chris Judge, who is a classical guitarist. And what is the name of the song that he's singing? It's uh, Cantados. Okay. Cantados. <laughs> Bear with me, Chris. I went to medical school in Spain, but that's as far as my Spanish <laughs> Cantados. Is that right, Chris? Contatos. Contatos. Okay. Well, and we'll have Earth Star dancing. So here it is. Chris? As Earth soon as Star. you're ready. <laughs>
I'm sitting here with this um, amazing being, Queer Heart Song. <laughs> She's helped me, and I've worked with her, and I know her work really well. Greetings to you. <laughs> Thank you. It's wonderful <laughs> to be here with both of you and all of the audience out there. Yeah. It's not so hot to be with the crew, I know that. <laughs> I have oh, to do it every day. it's a hot crew. <laughs> no, no, they do good. Yeah, they do great. <clears throat> yeah, it's really magical to be here and co-create with everyone. You know, I would like to hear, I know we talked about this before and you don't want to go into it very much, but could you tell us just a little bit about your process of, of coming to be Claire Hart Song <laughs> and doing the work that you do on all the dimensions? Well, thank you. That really opens Pandora's box, you know. <laughs> We like open. to do that on this show. <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed, and I'm very grateful, too, really. Um, it's been a wonderful journey uh, that has taken me, actually, from the time that I was very uh, a young child, with uh, experiences of light coming into my bedroom and um, great, intense longing to go home to a place that I knew I was not finding here in my, with my uh, biological family and uh, my experiences as a, as a child. And as I would look at the evening star, there was great yearning as I would reach out to the planet Venus, remembering it and wanting to go home to family there. And. Um, so that was the primary motivation through all of my life that every question seemed to revolve around. And since it seemed to be that I was waking up every morning in this body, which seemed to be a little different than most every other body of all of my friends and so on. You never uh, got to sit in the back <laughs> of the class, I think. No, usually I got to be the, the person First there right. in the front row, you know, <laughs> yeah. And uh, often people wondering, you know, who is this, right. just as much as I was wondering, right. you know, right. who everyone else was. Right. So that there was this great welling up desire, not just to, to leave here, because obviously I was waking into this body, right. and, and so it was like, what is my purpose? Mm -hmm. And may I then come into a full completion in whatever that is in this journey homeward into homecoming. And uh, without going into a lot of detail around the various steps of that great search and quest, for there was a great desire too, not only to just search for God, but to come into an understanding of how to be that, yeah. what, whatever I was, to be more fully that. Because even as a, as a young child of three years of age, I would go, one of my favorite places to go as an adventurous sort of elfin little creature was to go to the fish ponds, the goldfish ponds in um, the little town of Monrovia, which is a suburb of Los Angeles where I was first growing up. And looking down into the waters and observing that there were all of these different layers, these different qualities of being from the, the plant life and the stones and that and the fish within the water. Then there was the skin of the water and what was reflected onto the, the surface. And then there was that that was external at, at this other level. And your and, face looking and into I, the water. And my face <laughs> looking into the water. And, and it, always it was like this incredible mystery of what's the illusion and what's the reality and yes and you know, who is looking yeah, through these eyes, eyes. Right. and uh, so Claire it sounds like you, you didn't actually go to sleep like a lot of us did you just oh, kind of I really like, wanted I really wanted to fit in too I, because I really wanted to feel love here mm -hmm. I re and so I I worked really hard at adapting, uh -huh. and with a certain amount of that, there certainly came a kind of 
uh, a loss in a way of some of the gifts that I had mm -hmm. of being aware of being able to speak with the plants and the right. flowers and my pets and right. the beings of light who would come to me and that began to yeah, fade away. Yeah, that wouldn't make you popular in high school probably. <laughs> well, no, and being four foot six <laughs> right, didn't so exactly either. Right, so, <laughs> so, so you had yeah, to put those on the back burner for a while. Kind uh, of. Yeah, I did. Yeah. And, uh, but nevertheless, there was still this burning desire within my being. You can always remember it. I mean, always. back as long as you oh, can yes. remember. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And, mm -hmm. and um, then it, it, I had made agreements to bring four beautiful daughters in and had a, had a magnificent husband and family. And as my oldest daughter, who had, we had apparently made an agreement before incarnating that she would begin to be a catalyst for me that would help me to to experience that I really did not know how to love unconditionally and as I began to ask my understanding of, of God to assist me to be able to love my daughter and myself and, and all of life unconditionally it was like the um, the open sesame it was like <laughs> the, the the password you mm -hmm. know and boy when I did that the next thing I knew I didn't I was not in a in a structure or a situation that that taught me meditation mm -hmm. although I had had some experiences right. on my own that right. assisted me to penetrate the veil right. so with that background I began to just really put it out that I w truly wanted to still myself and open to that unconditional love and allow whatever that required of me mm. to totally be surrendered up into that and it happened, oh, it happened. <laughs> and the windows of heaven began to open and the next thing I knew, I had vis visitations mm -hmm. of the beings when I was a young child, and primarily the energies at that time who came to me were the Christ energies, the one that we call Jesus, mm -hmm. or I, I love to call him Yeshua, and his ascended name, Sananda. Mm -hmm. And aspects of my own multidimensional nature began to come in and visit me and I began to go through a process that is called soul braiding or having initiations of merging with these um, aspects mm -hmm. and being being just like that child observing the multi-dimensional nature of the the realms of water and air and and so on it was like again opening myself to this the, the great realms of light yeah. I wanted to ask you, maybe you could talk a little bit about the I Am Presence and, and, mm -hmm. what, and how you came to know the extent of that and what that was and when you started working with St. Germain. Mm. It was a couple of years after my initial opening, which was in 1985, at Harmonic Convergence. I had, was impressed to go to the Tetons just prior to that time I was gifted by friends who said you know Claire I just keep experiencing all of this violet around you and I really feel like there's there are these books that would be very good for you to mm -hmm. read and so I was introduced that was my first introduction to Saint Germain mm -hmm. and through the, the the green books of Guy Ballard Godfrey Ray King and uh, and so at Harmonic Convergence, I knew I was to be at the Tetons, and there was an initiation that occurred that took me into the etheric retreats of the Masters, and there was a council of beings who came and facilitated the next level of Christ initiations and opening of my heart. Then I was invited at that time by St. Germain to return to the Tetons two months later in October. I was all by myself. It was cold. Yeah, it was gray, 
sort of almost drizzly kind of day, and there was, and I had the place to myself. It was <laughs> magical. And I didn't know really where I was to be, but by the end of that three day period, I was guided to go in back of Jenny Lake, and I knew I was to go to a waterfall. And uh, I had some specific guidance from the Archangel Zadkiel that I was to tone the sound of Z. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting there on a rock before arriving at the waterfall. And I was doing this for quite some time, you know, and I had the place to myself so I could be rather outrageous with right, it all, right. you know, and not hold anything right. back because, yeah. you know, right. there was something that was pressing to be birthed and I mm -hmm. was intent right. on allowing that to happen. Right. And the next thing I knew, as I opened my eyes, as I was feeling this presence, there was this being who walked in front of me and my heart and whole cellular structure began to vibrate with recognition. And then I got down and followed him to the waterfall. Well, this was a very sacred experience for me that was and still continues to be a pivotal point for everything that has unfolded since then. And um, that particular energy at that time chose to manifest a form that I could recognize, and that was St. Germain. <laughs> so and then began the that, whole relationship uh, with St. Germain. Yes, a tremendously accelerated process, because after that I thought maybe I had done something wrong for about two months there were incredible headaches mm -hmm. and my body was going through the whole body system was being rearranged recalibrated I'd gone through a bit of that before mm -hmm. but this was really extraordinary time of ha being re some call it being rewired uh -huh. so that I could tap into right. the full merging of my I am presence and uh, have that completely anchored into my heart flame. And how would you define the I am present for someone who's not as familiar with it as you? That's a good question, <laughs> Alan. <laughs> I try every now and then to. <laughs> and it's good that we ask because then we always receive and hopefully my sharing with you will open you to more of what that energy is for you because for each of us it's going to be a unique experience but always it will open us to greater and greater flows of love, greater and greater understandings of who we truly are beyond the superficiality of any identity that we think ourselves to be within these bodies of form and the personalities that we have created which are divine instruments. And yet we come to understand that there's more and more and more through that I am. The I am is that initial core essence of self that has never left source. It is in utter clarity of knowing that all is indeed well, no matter what the appearance is within the dramas and the play of God that's going on here, that through that I am that I am. We have the opportunity of looking at all of the reflections and mirrors of our life and with profound recognition and love that I am that I am. And it opens us like opening a great package, a great present. So we come into our I am presence, you see. Well, well you were going to do a, like an invocation and a, a channeling and try to bring St. Germain in. Why don't we just well, turn it over it to you? Hopefully I won't try. try. You will. Hopefully it All right, will, well, it, it will stand not corrected. be a, Hopefully it will not be a trying experience. <laughs> All, right, <laughs> <everyone>. <laughs> All right, so why don't you just, you know, take it away and, you know, All do right, the okay. meditation. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah. I feel truly honored and blessed for this opportunity to share and uh, to be gifted in the process of giving myself. <laughs> All right. 
So let's just allow ourselves to quiet our minds and hearts, our awareness of who we are within form as we feel supported wherever we are, wherever we are finding ourselves in this now moment called time. Whatever our circumstances, let us be aware of how divinely blessed we are as we attune to our breath and allow our breath now to carry us. Let us surrender, surrender up into our breath, all of our desires, our hopes and wishes, the challenges of our life, those places within that feel wounded and in pain. Let us bring all of our gifts, of all of our experience of being within human form in this plane of physicality now, upon the current of our breath, and allowing our breath now to carry us through our life stream into that place where we are home. Let us indeed bridge, be conduits of spirit and spirit within form, heaven and earth merged in our heart. As we call forth now the energies of the Father, Mother, Child, God, I am, Let us choose to focus all of our energy here, now. And let us do this quite consciously with great thanksgiving, for in that attitude of gratitude, we can know our humility and be open childlike and innocent. And in that place of openness and unity, we may indeed know that there is but one here, having infinite array of form in which to interact, to play, to comprehend itself. Let us rest now in the arms of this Christed energy that we are, and allow that to carry us into the I am that I am that has seated us from the beginning and is carrying us now into the omega point of return into homecoming. And this we say in the name of the Christ, amen and amen. And so it is. Mm. 
Mm. Greetings, my beloveds. Greetings to you. Mm. Thank it's you wonderful for being here. To be here, indeed, with all that I am to gaze upon. All of you, indeed. This wondrous. Mm. So how may we co-create wondrous <laughs> Have you fun? ever been on TV before? <laughs> indeed, I have. You have. You get around. I do get around. So you're the, the being that people refer to as Saint Germain? There is a wondrous flow of energy that is moving through this instrument indeed that is aligned into that which you would call Saint Germain. I will not say that this is Saint Germain, but in that understanding of oneness where there is convergence indeed, this you can say indeed is Saint Germain. What is a mystery to you, Saint Germain? A mystery is my story. <laughs> <laughs> You're brilliant. Indeed, and I am a reflection of that which is your beauteous brilliance, always. Darwin, please talk to us a little bit about, about love, about mm. soulmates, about twin flames, mm. about this, this that everyone is looking for. Mm. That is a hot topic. <laughs> mm. It is wondrous, indeed, to open ourselves to love. Love is a grand opener. So that God, the divine you, may have access here now to play with itself the instruments of harmony the instrumentation of grand awe and relishment grand delight grand passionate flow of exuberant awe of life itself flowing within the veins to be pumped through a heart that is in fervor of its grand relishment of the gift of life, which is love, which is God. Mm -hmm. To know that, to be it. Soulmates, mm. that what you call twin souls? May I give forth that which you would call a bit of PR? A Go bit right of ahead. promotional mm, sense of that which you call the clock face. Mm, looks like half hair past a freckle here. <laughs> anyway, that which you call uh, time, would uh, we could elaborate for quite a few of your nows hmm? on that which is your twin souls and your soulmates. And I will share with you a bit. But there is yonder down there before the statuary, a, mm, a book that in which there is grand commentary about this subject. And so I would invite those who choose to participate within an expanded understanding of what your soulmate is. For indeed, so when you are in grand search of that which is external of you to fulfill you, to facilitate your happiness. You do not feel that you can be happy without it. Hmm? Then you will be in grand search and quest and grand frustration, for it will not come unto you in that manner. You will have wondrous reflections indeed of entities who likewise are wanting to be filled, who do not know their wholeness, know their, the sovereign God I am within them, the merging, the divine marriage of the masculine and the feminine flows of life within their own breast. Hmm? And so there is the search, the quest to find that through relationships. And eventually, relationship brings one back, if it's not through great weariness, through great mm, 
sorrows and anguish of the breast to begin that uh, moment of truth in which one pauses and shifts into neutral and begins then to call forth that which is peace, be still and know the God I am. Hmm? The lover within self, the beloved within every sunset, within the twinkle of the diadems of the heavens as they pass, the walking upon the dewy grasses and allowing that which is the instrumentation of the symphony of life as the leaves of the trees caress one another in that embrace of the wind which is the grand lover that uh, is the beloved for much of that which is soulmate and twin soul is not what you would call incarnated into the physical it is very vast energies that you are increasingly in that place of stillness being attuned to and in the journey with relationship with all of the wondrous uh, brothers and sisters regardless of whether they are human or they are your animals or they are your plants or the minerals the earth herself and the heavens eventually bring you back to source to the beloved within you and when that embrace begins to be ignited that passionate flow begins to rise up in you and indeed, your arms become the wings of your heart. As you are uplifted in the flight of soul, then, in a magical moment of now, when you least expect it, when you are least demanding it, that energy will just pop right into view that you have been calling forth. And be aware that it may not look exactly <laughs> like you were expecting. Hmm? It may not be that Prince Charming or that wondrous Queen of Heaven that would embody the goddess energies that you would relish. Indeed it may, but it will always stretch you. It will always allow you the wondrous mm, experience of the Divine Mirror who will show you unto you all of those areas within self that, um, that have yet to be aligned to love. Mm. And you will know what unconditional, limitless love is through that experience of the embrace of everything that you have perhaps judged within self, everything that you have feared, and everything, every addiction, every attachment that has kept you focused within a limited identity, that has you mm. in the frustrations of certain expectations of that which you feel that you have to have in your life in order to get on with it, so to speak, you see? In order to be happy. In order to be happy, in order to have that joy. But the joy will emerge as your heart is stretched. It is broken and it stretches and the love increases and the wings of your heart begin not only to embrace that beloved with whom you are making love, perhaps a partner of opposite gender, perhaps it is of same gender, perhaps it is a sibling who is much younger, or a grandparent, or a mentor. Soulmates and twin souls are more than one, you see. And eventually you begin to understand the multifaceted nature of you, that this energy of the 12 that brings you into the totality of the 13th that you've been hearing a lot of chitter chatter around all of that your 12 dna <laughs> your 12 dna and all of your uh, the 12 tribes of isis royal right. the 12 disciples you know the round table of Arthur and all of that well it is coming into the center point now of the 13th who embraces all of those rays, all of those multitudinous divine facets of you. And these mates that you draw to you will bring you then into the awareness that indeed it is all of humanity 
every, every facet of God. Multitudinous, multidimensional, omnidimensional energies that right now in this very moment of transition, the, uh, the eye in the sky, that single eye of God is here looking upon humanity of this earth plane with grand awe and wonderment of what is occurring. For that which is your twin soul is being gathered unto you and the earth and the solar body and the galactic you and the intergalactic and the universal and the omni-universal. You see, it's a big picture here that we're bringing into completion. Does that assist a bit? I was getting tired. <laughs> oh, Doing all this omnidimensional mm. stuff was wearing me out. And do you know, my dear, that is really simple. As you allow yourself, indeed, to come into childlike simplicity, right. to just be allowing of you, you just as you are, utterly divine expression mm -hmm. of love here now. And love the little wrinkles as they show up, for those are indicators of grand gathering of wisdom. Hmm? The, the, the sparkling, the sprinkling of grays, with the silver within the gold, that too is divine. The extra cells to love on the flesh is <laughs> The There's spreading. expansion, yeah, <laughs> all of that, you know. It is uh -huh. all divine, God. It's simple. It's to walk under the stars, to be in wonderment, in innocence, to be in the now moment. For the focus of energies are truly bringing you into the pivotal point of choice. In your innocence, know your I know sense. Hmm? All right. St. Germain. Yes, beloved. Would it be possible to um, ask Portia to speak with us this night? Oh, that we is have a few minutes and it would be really mm. delightful. That would be wondrous to bring her through. Mm, there was a wondrous gift of this rose, indeed. That which be I, and that which be she, which is also I. And in, in, in the blending of our being. Our Portia I is am. who, for people who are not familiar, mm. is you and what's the other? Uh, Portia is that which is my twin soul energy. Mm? The feminine aspect, expression of that, that be I. When I come forth in this expression of exuberance, a bit of nudge here and there, <laughs> some wearying of that which is the noggin, hmm? trying to keep track of all of the words that have you going in circles, I facilitate that which is the nudging and the ignition of the torts of freedom within your breast. I give unto you my heart in that manner, mm -hmm. the expression of directing the flow that I am in that particular way, all right? That which be she, she is the softness. Now, for some reason or another, there was the clipping of the thorns, but I want you to understand, my dears, that the thorns upon the rose of you are equally divine. I embrace the banquet and the bouquet of all of you. So I understand there was a desire not to prick St. Germain's and Claire's <laughs> fingers here. Exactly. And, uh, and bring forth Next crimson. Next time we'll leave them on. All right. <laughs> uh, but that which is Portia is the grand softness of the petals, the petals of you, indeed. And I, uh, she is very much appreciative of this invitation. She is one who prefers to support this energy in silence. Always, whenever you experience Saint Germain, that which be the divine maternal essence which embraces unconditionally all of life and brings it into the embrace of love, she is always present when you feel the softness of a tear rolling upon the lily cheeks, your, the petals of you, that is she, and she touches and caresses and facilitates the opening of your heart to more of you and more of life. So indeed, we will allow a shift. Okay. okay. All right.
Hello, my beloveds. Let you. Mm. It is wondrous to gaze upon all of you here. We don't Magical have... indeed. Oh, all these cameras. This is quite new for me to use words and have these apparatus looking upon me. Wondrous you, eyes. Usually you send Saint Germain out to do that? Yes. <laughs> Portia, we don't have a lot of time, so I wanted to just to ask you if there was a message that you would like to mm -hmm. give out to humanity at this mm -hmm. time. That which I would give unto you is all that I am. And the invitation to you to bring yourselves into vulnerability, to allow that which are the thorns upon the rose of your life to be re relished and understood and appreciated for the wisdom that they garner for you, that they give unto you, to not only just focus on that which is the opening of the rose, the opening of your heart to more of life, the whole process of coming into your I am presence will be that, indeed, of the experience of the ascended masters, the councils of light, some you call the bodhisattvas, whose love is so immense that they look upon all of humanity as their own self. And there's no way that you can go home without yourself, can you? Hmm? So indeed, all of you will have the experience of embracing the rose that you are, including all of your thorns, and equally embracing all of your brothers and sisters. And you will not esteem that which be I and my beloved Saint Germain and the other masters of light. You will not esteem us and put us on pedestals above you. for. Who we are is you. You are fulfilling that which mm, we are relying upon you to fulfill. We walk with you, beside you, and we support you, and we salute you, for you are indeed accomplishing much. Thank you so much. Mm. Thank you for it is truly you. my honor and blessing. I love you all so grandly. I love all that you are. Oh. So we finished before we we finished here. Huh? <laughs> uh, the time here seems to go. Mm -hmm. No, you don't have time mm -hmm. where you are. Uh, that's true. There are we're only we were now. <laughs> all right. We'll just allow a shift here for Claire okay. to come back and focus. Welcome Hi. back. Hi. <laughs> well, I've been here all along. It's just uh, more I know of a that. focus. I yeah. know that. Well, thank you. I hope that this has been everything that you were wanting it to be. It was, it was glorious, really. Maybe just take a minute or so and talk a little bit about the, what you're doing, the I Am Sanctuary in Mount Shasta, and anything else that you would like to put out and invite right. others to know about. And then we'll end with our music over there. All right. Um, I've been asked to facilitate a sanctuary in Mount Shasta, within the vortex of Mount Shasta, for those who are uh, opening to the, the initiations, particularly of the I Am Presence. Often those initiations can be very arduous, and ones are wanting a time of silent retreat and healing and so I've been gifted with some modalities for facilitating the incarnation of ascension frequencies and assisting cellular deep cellular soul memory to be released so that there's room 
for more and more love and light. So you have a, like in. a retreat center up there for that to it's happen? It's very small. It's really just, at like present, it's room. just, <laughs> it, it, ones will have their own private room, but it's my own private uh -huh. home right now. And eventually uh, there will be an expansion of that, type. yes. That would be wonderful. Yes, it is. And uh, uh, I'm also co-facilitating with the Divine Director uh, Mount, with Mount Shasta Vortex, the bringing in of energies of special children who are coming in at this time, who are mm -hmm. a part of the sixth and seventh root race, and assisting the parents to bring the frequencies of their embodiments so that there can truly be light conception. So that's another topic, and maybe we can We're come busy. back and, well, and, and for, talk really about that another time. Honoring us with coming. Oh, it's, it's been really truly my pleasure. It truly is. So. Thank you again so much. And anybody much. who wants to yeah, what's hear the about name your of the book, book, Twin Oops. Souls and Soulmates. Twin Souls and, and Soulmates. soulmates. Can and just is get it, in is touch it available us? at stores around? Yes, it's available at the metaphysical bookstores. It's published by Triad Publishers. They've okay, done a series on the yeah. Saint, on Saint Germain. All right, and also mm -hmm. if anybody's interested, you know, our number scrolls at the end of the show, and now we just want to go to Chris Judd and. Finish us off, Chris, with... Good night, uh, everyone. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thanks for coming. God bless you.